solution that our clues will try to trick our team. Hello there, everyone. I'm Crazy Caleb, and today we are taking a look at hinges. So this is another blank module, but as you can tell, some of these hinges are gone, and when you highlight over ones that are present, they will give a little arrow. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the specific steps to remove all four of the, all four of the hinges present, or all of the hinges present on the module. So we're going to follow these steps here. So we're going to find the first missing hinge, uh, hinge starting from the bottom right and going clockwise. So let's start from the bottom right corner, is what it means, and going clockwise. This will be our first missing hinge right here. There will always be two on each side of the square. Here, uh, these two right here, these two right here, these two, and these two. In this case, this is our first one. So now we're going to order the hinges from one to eight, starting with the missing ones and going counterclockwise. The one that we found first from bottom right is our first one. So let's mark that there. So now taking a look, so we're going to go, we're going to order the missing ones going counterclockwise from that position. So the next one going counterclockwise is going to be here. So we're going to mark this one with the two. Next up, going counterclockwise, we have a three right here at the top. And finally, we have a four. So now that's all of our missing hinges ordered here. The rest of the hinges are ordered starting from the first present hinge after the last missing hinge. We're still going counterclockwise, and then we're going counterclockwise, and then we're going clockwise for the rest. So in this case, so this was our last missing hinge. So we're going to go counter. Uh, so we're going to go continuing counterclockwise until we get to our uh, first present hinge in this case. So down here will be a five. And next up, we're going to continue clockwise now getting the rest of the hinges present. So in this case, this will be six, this will be seven, and this will be eight. And just like that, we found our hinges order. So now what we're going to do is use the top two hinges values in the table, three and six in this case, column then row, column then row. So using the top, the top uh, two hinges value in reading order, uh, we're going to take the number from it, in this case we get four, and use it in the other table. Now what this will give us is our order of the positions of the hinges we must press. So now, how exactly do we figure out which order to press them in? So what I've done here is, it says to start from the top left and go clockwise, ordering them from one to eight. So it will always look like this format right here. So a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight around and clockwise. So now what we're going to do is this does not matter. All we were doing this little bit right here is we were trying to get the top two values for this grid. So now we're going to go use table four right here, or list four in this case, and we're going to press the hinges corresponding to the positions um, that come, come first. So in this case, we need to actually figure out which ones are present. We're only going to press the four that are present in this case. So taking a look down here, seven that's not present. Six is, however, so we're going to tap that one first. And what you have to do is you can't highlight it here, but you have to actually tap on the actual hinge. And it will tap, and you'll hear that little ding sound. So next up is two in our list. That is present. Tap that. Next up is five in our list. That is present. And by default, this will be our last one present. And now one of the hinges goes missing, and we'll repeat this for the amount of times with that, the, that the hinges are left. So now, what's different about this data? So let's take a look back at this grid here. So when repeating, start with the first missing hinge clockwise from the hinge whose value was 8 on the last set of hinges. So in this case, our value with 8 was down at the bottom right. In this case, right down here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go clockwise and find the first missing hinge. It's also important to note that when we start counting, going counterclockwise, if our value happened to be an 8 and there isn't a hinge there, that will be our value 1. We don't go clockwise to another, to another hinge. We simply just mark that as number 1. And that's what we're going to number each number as. So going clockwise, 
this is our first missing hinge right here, and let's mark it like that. And now we're going to use the same rules that we used before. We're going to get with the, get the missing ones first, order them, ordering them first by going counterclockwise. So in this case, you're still two, you're still three, you're still four, but this changes to five. And now we're going to keep going counterclockwise and find the uh, first present hinge in this case. So in this one, still going counterclockwise, our first present hinge is right here. That, that was position eight before. So this instead will be our six, and now we're going counter. Uh, now we're going clockwise for the rest of them. So in this case, you're a seven now, and you're eight. So now taking the top three values, the top two values in this case, three and seven, like it says column then row, we're going to find it here. This corresponds to table five now. And taking a look back down at this list here, back down at this chart. We're going to look for the ones that are present. Three. Yep, you're present right here. Four. Nope. Eight. No. Five. Yes. And by default, the last one should be pressed. And now this hinge is gone. So taking a look, what value was eight on the last set of hinges? This happened to be the set of eight. However, we're going to go counterclockwise. We're going to go clockwise for the first missing hinge. But look, this happens to be the a missing hinge now. So what this means is this is going to become our value one in this case. And now we're going to go counterclockwise for all the missing hinges now. You're going to become a two. You're going to become a three. You're going to become a four. You're going to become a five and you are going to become a six. And we're gonna keep going clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, excuse me, until the first present hinge, in this case, right here, and then go clockwise for the rest of the present ones. So in this case, you are an eight. So in this case, our top list is going to, our top two values are going to be two seven in this case. Two seven corresponds to list two. So taking a look here, Two, six, four. Two is present right here. So let's tap that and tap this. One of them removes. And by default, we already know that there's only one hinge left. And I like this module to solve because it's rather cool. So let's tap this hinge and watch it solve. Module can actually get taken off the entire screen. And as you can see, that's where the black background is. So now let's do the same thing again. This is a rather simple module with an interesting process. So taking a look here. So starting from up top, we're going to find the first missing hinge starting from the bottom right. In this case, you'll be right here. So I'm going to actually just get rid of all of these for the time being. Mark them, as, mark them in as X for now. So now, starting from the bottom right, let's find the first missing hinge. Yep, we found it right there. And that's going to be value 1. So now we're going to go counterclockwise and get the rest of the missing hinges. Once the lights turn back on. So our next missing hinge going counterclockwise is going to be up here, up on the top right face. That's going to be a 2. Next one is going to be a um, on the left top face. And now that we've gotten all our missing hinges taken care of, let's keep going, counter let's keep going counterclockwise until our first present hinge, which happens to be the next one. 4 in this case. And let's go clockwise for the rest. 5, 6, seven, and an eight. So our top two values, in this case, are five and a two. That corresponds to list zero down here. I can pop it up. Um, bear with me. In this case, it's going to be two, three. We have uh, position three here. 
Uh, five. Nope. Four. Yep. Eight. No. Six. Yep. Seven. And a one. One region just goes. Happens to be that one. Perfect. So now, like it says here, uh, start with the first thing. Uh, start with the first missing hinge clockwise from the hinge whose value was eight on the last set of hinges. Well, look at that. This value that was eight before in the last stage happens to be num um, the first missing hinge. So that's going to be one instead. And now going counterclockwise for all the rest of the missing hinges, let's get their values. So this is going to be two. This is now going to be three. This is now going to be a four. Continuing counterclockwise to the first present value, that'll give me a six. Next up, going clockwise for the rest of the present values, you're going to be a... Hold on. Um, one, two, three, you're actually a 5, excuse me. Um, this is a value of 6. This is a value of 7, and this is a value of 8, corresponding to the regular hinges. So, now, using the column row format, 6 and a 3, this corresponds to list 1, in this case. So, looking down here, let's press 8, 6, 7, 3, Two, five, four, and a one. That goes away. Taking a look, our last value was an eight. Oh, look at that. So this is going to become our new one value, because going clockwise, this is the first one that's clockwise. So now we're going to go counterclockwise to all the missing hinge values. You become a two. You become a three. You become a four. Five, continuing uh, counterclockwise, our first present hinge is going to be here, so that's going to be marked as a six, and now we're going to go clockwise for the rest of them. So you become a seven, and you become an eight. So eight, two, in reading order, is our top two hinge values. Taking a look, list eight is what it's corresponding to, and we're going to press that in this order. One, five, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, and by default this means that the last one is the one I have to press. That one's gone. So next up, starting from value eight, let's find the first missing hinge going clockwise. The first missing hinge is going to be this one, the second one right here. So you're going to be value one. Now going counterclockwise for all the missing hinges, you become a two, you become a three, you become a four, you become a five, you become a six, and then let's continue going counterclockwise, you're a seven, and then going clockwise for the rest of them, you're an eight. So a seven one is a value of one. Eight, six, seven. And by default, the last one right here, you're gone, and press you. Just like that, the module solved. Bolts off into wherever it goes. I really don't know where it goes, but it just goes. Huh, that's interesting. It goes through the wall. I've never seen that happen before. Let's take a look at one final example. Wow, there's a six of them here. Marking all of these with X's at the start. Okay, so starting from the bottom right, bottom right corner speaking specifically, we're going to find the first missing hinge. In this case, starting from the bottom right, rotating clockwise, is going to be here, up at the right top one. That is going to be our first value. Going counterclockwise, for all of the missing values, you're going to be the second because there's only two missing hinges. And continuing counterclockwise, you are going to be a three for the first present hinge. Hinge, excuse me. Now going count, uh, now going clockwise for the rest of the present hinges. Let's just number them uh, one to eight. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So our top three, uh, so our top 
um, top values are going to be an 8 and a 3. Corresponding to list 1, we're going to press the buttons in the 8th position, the 6th position, the 7th position, 3th position, not present, 2 position, present, 5, 4, not present, and a 1. And this hinge disappears. So taking a look at the 8 value, let's go first uh, missing hinge. In this case, it's the same position. And now we're going to go counterclockwise to all the missing hinges. In this case, you're going to become a 2 now, and you're going to become a 3. Continuing uh, counterclockwise, we're going to go to here, it's going to be a 4, and ordering the rest of the present hinges clockwise. 5, 6, 7, and an 8. For top values are now going to be an 8 and a 4, corresponding to list 6. So in this case, we're going to press 7, not present, 1, 8, 3, 2, 5, 4, and a 6. First one's gone now. So now starting from value 8, this one is missing its value now, so it is going to become a 1 in this case. And going counterclockwise for the rest of the values, uh, you're going to stay at 2. Its next missing hinge is going to be a 3. Its next hinge is going to be a 4. And that's all the missing hinges. So the next counterclockwise one that's present is going to be a 5. This is going to be a 6. This is going to be a 7. And you are going to be an 8. So now our top two values are a 1 and a 5. And we're looking at list 1 again. So pressing 8, 6, 7's missing, 3, 2, and 5. Now 6 is gone. So just remember that when pressing the hinges, it's going to correspond to these, starting from the top left in the position wise. You're not going to use the positions you get from these calculations here. Is that is completely that is only relevant to the top two values and for the next stages. So taking a look here, we start at value eight. The first clockwise missing set is going to be this one right here. Stays one. Going counterclockwise, getting all the missing hinges, you're going to be a two. You are going to be a three. Um, you're going to be a four. You're going to be a five. And continuing counterclockwise to our first present hinge, you're going to be a 6, you're going to be a 7, and this stays an 8. So our values at the top are 1 and 6. That corresponds to list 5, and in the positions 3, 4, 8, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, that's what we're going to press. So 3, 4, 8, 5, and by default, too. Now this is gone. So taking a look here, its first missing um, clockwise one is going to be a one in this case. And then going counterclockwise, two, three, you become a four, and that changes the rest here. You become a five, you become a six, and then continuing counterclockwise, you become a seven, and then around to eight. So now one and seven, is going to be a 5 on the same list again. So a 3, 4, 8, and then a 2, and then a 2. And just like that, it's all module. I've never seen it like that before. As always, thank you guys for watching. Stay crazy, stay cool, don't explode, and don't forget to put more hinges on this module. See you guys!